Welcome back to the Christian Theological Dark Web. This episode, we explore probably the most controversial and bifurcating topic, not only in modern Christianity, but in our modern era as well. Genesis 6, 1-4 has a strange passage that has skewed so much of our Christian theological interpretation as far back as the 4th century when Rome adopted Christianity as its main religion. We hack into the different following topics. Who are the fallen watchers? Who are the sons of God in Genesis 6, 1-4? Are they different? Are they the same? What did they do that was so heinous? What have these concepts done to our modern understanding of theology versus our ancient brother's perspective on these topics? Find out today on Who Are the Fallen Angels, Part 1. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so anyway, just to sum it up super quick, I'm almost done here. Really just summing it back up for you guys. It's super interesting. I'm glad you said that, Shell. Um, the banished are the watchers that, at least the watchers that disobeyed God and chose to come here to earth. Um, some subset of them, at least a subset, um, taking women, human women as wives and having children by them, which are the Nephilim. And the Nephilim were eventually wiped out um, largely. We'll get into that. That's a whole other topic as well at some point. Um, and they are, their disembodied spirits are demons. So... I'm going to stop sharing because we have cleared that bad boy up. And um, right, right. At this point, I can move on, Shell, if you want me to talk about the Anakian account or if you want to. Um, I think so. We we talked about Psalm 82. We did not go into Ezekiel 28. Um, oops. I think. It's up to you. You tell me. We can do it either way. Um, Ezekiel 28 is is um, a part of scripture that most people um, know something about. It, it's where we think we get the word, the name of, of the head of the fallen as Lucifer. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Uh yeah, I know what you're talking the about. the Prince of Tyre, the King of Tyre, or Tyre, depending on which way you want to pronounce it. Um, Where are you at, Ezekiel? When he said, uh, there you go. "Oh man, it's a it's a long scripture reference, but it's it's the verse what? Oh, starting really in the beginning, from verse one. Yeah, it really goes down. It's like the whole um through 19 verses. It's it's long. Oh, yeah, it's extensive. Um it but it's the one you you were perfect, full of wisdom and beauty. Mm-hmm. You were in the garden of Eden. You um walked between the living stones, which is the thro- in the throne room of God. Um uh, you are covered with every precious stone. Your you you have built-in musical <laughs> uh, aspects, instruments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like like crazy. But then you said your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor, which is scary. You're so beautiful that you became that full of yourself. I cast you to the ground. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you by the multitude of your iniquities and the unrighteousness of your trade. You profaned your sanctuaries. So I brought fire out of your midst and it consumed you and I turned you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you. Um, It's going back and forth between apparently a really uh, stuck up king (laughs) who also has all of the same attributes as the prince of the power of the air, who I guess his name wasn't Lucifer, but most people think his name was Lucifer. It's just about easier to say that he was Lucifer. Yeah. His the the morning star. Um it that's that's where we we know that he fell. Um, this scripture part, though, does not say anything about him taking a third of the angels with him. This in conjunction with Revelation. 
maybe chapter 12, I didn't look it up, sorry, I'm going off the top of my head, is where um, they people will get the third of the stars falling mm. from the sky and thinking that it is the third of the angels that fell along with Lucifer. Um, I... I... <sighs> I don't think it's quite accurate, but I also don't think that it's wrong enough to be a big deal. And maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but I've not, I've not gotten in into it enough to know. I know that um, the numbers, the, the, the most solid numbers given for the, the fallen or the, the banished Rick, you've got that in the Enochian writings. So why don't you go ahead and go to that? Which part was it, Sean? Sorry, I was I was trying to find that the verse for you actually in Revelation. Oh, in Revelation, um, it's it's all good. I can look it up in a second. Yeah, gonna, it, I might have. It might actually be closer to the beginning of the book. The the Enoch, uh, the part about how many. Oh. of the watchers decided to go ahead and go. Yeah. Um, make trades with mankind for wives. I'm going to read you guys uh, kind of the, the, it was 200. It was 200, but um, let's see. So this is, and, and actually before we do that, um, the reason we're bringing up an Enoch, the book of Enoch, the reasons are a few fold, um, but I'm going to go with two, main ones um enoch is referenced as an individual in the bible and he is super important um he is in the genesis uh account of um the lineage of jesus from adam and his part of his lineage is his son methuselah and methuselah is important because Methuselah has in his name a hidden prophecy, um, which is very <laughs> cool. Um, his name means scent and death. Um, now, why is that relevant? Uh, so <laughs> Enoch was taken up very much is. Uh, 300 years after uh, Methuselah was born. Um, I was just reading it a little bit ago. And... On on face value, Methuselah doesn't actually mean that. But if you break the words apart in his name, it is sent in death. Um, the name Methuselah itself, I actually looked it up because I was like, really? I wanted to double check. Um, it actually means worshiper Do you have of Selah. And... Oh, no, no, sorry. Or, or man of the javelin, either of those. Um, but when you break his name down is the hidden prophecy. And, and this is very cool. When I was looking through the reason for why the prophecy was hidden like that, because to just call your son death is like blasphemous. I mean, there's gods that are named death, right? There are gods of death. <laughs> so right. uh, Enoch was like, mm, I walk with God, probably not going to name my kid death. So he didn't. Uh, he he named him Death and Sent. And the reason that this is a cool prophecy is because the year that Enoch passed is the year that God sent the flood right, upon right. the earth right. to wipe the slate. Clean. Do you do you have that whole the the phrase of the um the lineage the the first whatever oh. seven or eight? <laughs> lines from adam um, on i because when you said it. that about methuselah you, you're talking about uh uh chuck misler yeah I, I can pull it up here in a second um while while i'm doing okay that. uh chuck misler while you're doing Lynch. that i'll go to isaiah 14 12 and 12 through 14 because this is where we get, how are you fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn? How are you cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low? You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of the assembly. Hmm. What is that? In the sides of the north, I think is. Of what? 
on the far reaches of the north. I will ascend oh. above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. So that's Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, which is, you know, the great, the great treachery, the um, the treasonous act, the the first known treasonous act. Um, and and I'm going to assume that that's the first one, the, the one that um, got the Satan banned or kicked out of heaven. He's not banned yet because according to uh, the book of Job, God holds court and he goes <laughs> up there and mm-hmm. God says, where have you been? And he says, meh, here and there. And God says, dude, have you seen Job? Job's legit, bro. That dude's the stuff. What was, um, and what he was says, the Re- yeah, Revelation it's just because you... Um, I thought it was Revelation 12. I didn't find oh, it. I oh, okay, came okay. across the Isaiah oh, I see. one. <laughs> I found the Isaiah one too, so I was not sure. Okay. Isaiah, what was it, Sean? Yeah. Um, uh, 14. Okay. 12 through 14. Okay. The morning star, the star thing. Morning you know what? Right, right. Um, I did find the prophecy. Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Okay. So um, <laughs> this is a deviation for what I was going to say, but it's also very cool. Um, and this is why Enoch is relevant. So just going back to that whole idea, guys, um, I know we're all over the place, but there's a lot and we're trying to keep it, uh, centered. So bear with us. Uh, but this is the lineage of Adam all the way through Noah, uh, which is very cool. And and I, this is even cooler. I was realizing this, um, (laughs) on the way through this, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, seven, Enoch. This is very cool because so Methuselah has that meaning sent and die, right? Um, that talks about the flood coming when Methuselah dies. But what is even cooler is that Enoch is the seventh in the line of Adam uh, of generations. And we all know that seven is the number for perfection. But but we, I, I don't think a lot of us know why the number for perfection is the number for perfection. because It's because it's a combination of three and four, which means complete and whole, um, which is very cool. I didn't really realize that until about a year or two ago, but (laughs) Enoch's completion by giving birth to his son, Methuselah is a fulfillment also of like a full cycle. Like it is done basically kind of idea because he's been born. Um, so the names of Adam, so there's, there's one, one, two, three, four, six, seven, 10 generations between Adam and Noah. Um, and it's Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mah- Mahal- Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, mm-hmm. Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. And the meanings are as follows from Adam to Noah is man appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching his death shall bring the despairing rest or mm-hmm. comfort. Mm-hmm. Here, actually, let me just do this. This is probably better. Let me just share the screen real quick. You know, put it up yeah, there. Just yeah, it is so. Cool. It is very cool. It's one of those things, and that's that's ga- gametry, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see here. So, the this is these are the the uh, the names here, as you guys can see them right here. Those are the names in the English and the Hebrew, um, and the generations, and then from there. We read this. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing rest. Oh, that's the gospel hidden within the genealogy of Genesis. Right. Um, It's meant to be very beginning. Yes. And that's a hardcore shout out to. That's the lamb who was slain uh, before the foundations of of the earth right there okay house yeah. they have an app by the way it's real yep. good you can <laughs> chuck misler i also it's this guy right here chuck misler he he is no he is another I one also of those have uh... that app yeah it's great and actually most of the stuff is free um he, yeah he is like an uh i wouldn't say less academic just like a different academic um than michael heiser uh 
he likes like the math and the yeah. sciencey part yeah, of yeah, this. Yeah. Like his view he's so on cool. he's such a cool the, guy. Uh, I wish he was with us still. Right, our dimension <laughs> kind of being a matrix mm-hmm. type thing mm-hmm. is. It's really. It's pretty astonishing. Yep. You have some time on your hands, and uh, you want to get lost in his find out crazy something real stuff. interesting. Oof, yeah, it's a rabbit hole you should go down. Um, and he breaks he breaks the word down pretty cool yeah. too. Yeah, Ch- Chuck Missler is another another one of those um, guys that we geek yeah out after. He's, he's so really cool. oh. surprisingly enough, I was not wrong. Um, it is Revelation twelve. Oh wow. Well. Um, really probably seven starting, um, verse seven through oof, that part's so good. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> just because it happens to be one of my favorite scriptures that people don't complete, um, through verse 11, 11 gotcha. revelation, um, twelve, seven, eleven, seven through eleven. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, aha. Uh-huh. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I was talking about the trustworthiness of Enoch. So, Enoch, that's one, right? That we have. He walked. The Bible tells us that he walked with God. I don't have that scripture on hand, but it's very specific that he. I think it's in Genesis five or four. Probably, probably, yeah, um, yeah. But he, <clears throat> it's it's. It's interesting because you're going through the genealogy and then it stops on Enoch and it's like he walked with God and he walked with him so much time and then God took him. So he was like translated. Yeah. And they went looking for and him. And they couldn't find him. They, that's right. And that's that's how the word tells yeah. it is that um, he went and he lived with them. It is in five. And when Enoch had lived 65 years, he fathered Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 mm-hmm. years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Bam. Um <clears throat> So <laughs> that's part of the reason that it's trustworthy to think about the book of Enoch being uh, weighty. Uh, I guess there's three reasons. Another is that he's quoted. Uh, he's like directly the book of Enoch is quoted in the New Testament. Um, e- Enoch was common literature for the Jews in the old world. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. First Enoch, which is the one that if if there's any reliability to it, uh there's three books of Enoch and the first one is the most complete and the most, um, I guess we'll just say believable. It lines up with the biblical narrative really, really well. There are some discrepancies. So, um, I think that that's why it's not considered, um, part of the actual biblical text itself, but I, I will say that's for us Protestants. It is in the Catholic Bible and it is in the Ethiopic, which is actually where Bible and yep. the Noptic yep. Bible and always has been. So, <laughs> yeah, so there's there's something there. And like you said, it is a, it's a inter um, intertestamental mm-hmm. inter. I did not say that right. You're right. Okay, there. Thanks. Um, book that Jesus was familiar yes. with. As, so much so as that he, he saying, I'll let you go back. Kind of like, like I mean, he clearly makes uh, conceptual references to it in, in the New Testament. Uh, oh, yeah. Very, very, uh, on more than one occasion, actually. And when you're familiar with the book of Enoch and then you uh, read the uh, the Gospels, yeah. Then you see yep, it. Yep. And and like I said, it's quoted. I mean, it's literally quoted um, in the Bible. So there's that too. Um, I, I also would like to point yeah, out by Jude. Uh huh. Uh huh. Jude in and, in uh, a cha- or sorry in verses six and seven because Jude only has one chapter. <laughs> Jude is only in Second Peter. Is it in six and seven? Second Peter. Are those short quotes? Uh, yeah, Jude six and seven, and um. P, second Peter two, four through nine. Um, so, uh, what was I going to say guys? Oh crap. Oh, so there's, there's really strong reasons to believe that it's, it's good. Uh, it's, it's, it's got some good solid 
uh, truth in it. We'll just say truth. I'm not going to say that it's God breathed necessarily or anything like that, but there is some solid truth there. Um, so that's why a lot of Christians reference it. Now, I, I want to make a caveat for you, all you guys that are like, that's blasphemous. Well, then stop reading C.S. Lewis. <laughs> Right. Frankly, don't don't read or, any Christian authors that that have any good ideas or conceptual. No, things. no purpose driven life. No, no Joyce Meyer. Well, I wouldn't read those anyway. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, purpose driven life is great if you're no, in high school. And, and no, it's good. Re- and, it's not uh, bad. Reading. What is that one? It's I mean, it's 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 not deep reading. <laughs> Joyce nope. Meyer has her place. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'd be comparable to like, uh, the book that we read when we started the podcast, uh, by, um, Tyler Statton. Right. Tyler. I, yeah. I would say yeah, he yeah. is phenomenal reading, even though he's not the Bible. Um, so, um, this, this was literature that was familiar to Christians and Christians would reference like, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's legit. It's on the level. Uh, same kind of thing that, that Jews used in, in that time period, right. To reference. And I think that these were, I don't know per se, but this was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls along with a lot of other apocryphal writings. Yeah. And um, I don't know per se, but I would beg to make the argument and the supposition that this is likely writings that were like compilations of conceptual things that the Jews had been passing down for a long time. And it eventually got compiled and ended up with these Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, it was just like Shell said, it was in the intertestamental period between, uh, I think it was about 300 BC, if I'm not mistaken, when, um, I've heard re- reference to it was about when it was, was supposedly written down in, in like a yeah. larger context and stuff. So, um, take that with a grain of salt. Um, and, and I'm going to, now I'm going to, that I've given you some context for it. I'm going to read, um, a little bit about this. So this is from. Um, And I'm going to tell you guys which one this is. I am reading from the Book of Enoch. And who is the author of this one here? Um, Because there's different translations of this one. Uh, This is by R.H. Charles, if you're interested to read the book. Um, I definitely think it is worth, oops, it's definitely worth reading. So I am reading from that particular one. And this is chapter six. Says, says the following, and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied in those days, that, excuse me, multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye, he's talking to the other uh, watchers or angels in this case. I fear ye will not indeed agree to this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered to him and said, let us all swear an oath. This is this gets kind of crazy. Uh, in my opinion, this is like really crazy that they're having this discussion. Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, <laughs> but to do this thing. They then swear, they all, they all swore, Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecation upon it. Now, I could keep getting into the other stuff, but that's essentially the the beginning of it. It goes on to talk about the Nephilim, who I'm not going to talk about in detail today. Um but I do want to give you just kind of that overview, right? So there, there is extra biblical text that supports what the Bible already says, and it's very closely tied. Well, and actually in some Bibles, it's already there anyway, but in, in, for us Westerners, which we don't include that text, uh, and, and I'm, that's fine. I'm not, um, I like the way that Tim says, uh, talks about the book of Enoch. People are like, well, is it the divine word of God? Is it good? Or is it, Tim says, I don't really care if it's the divine word of God or not. Like, is it relevant to the text that we're reading? That is the Bible. Does it support things that the Bible is saying? If it does, then it's worth reading. It's worth thinking about. I'm I'm not telling you to take it as, as gospel, (laughs) no pun intended being actually pun intended and literal (laughs) expression. Don't take it as gospel. Fine. You know, that's fine. But, but at the same time, don't, don't, 
throw the the baby out with the bathwater, right? Um, that's what I'm saying. Right, right. Um, so let's just kind of examine this real quick. They descend onto Mount Hermon, according to the the Anakian account, okay? Um, which Shell and I are not super convinced of anymore. Uh, well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get, get there. Get there. Not gonna, not gonna in get into the that. Near future. Um, <laughs> what are their actions? They took wives for themselves, um, which I think is very interesting. Why did they take wives and not husbands? Um, I'm gonna say that. By the way, they were in the garden. They were in the garden. Because they they were part of the divine mm -hmm. council, mm -hmm. they sat. Uh, Adam sat with them. Yep, 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 yep. Um, that's a that's going to be a fun fun episode as well. Um, so so that's one, right? Uh, why did they have Why did they have wives and not husbands? I'm gonna. Shell and I were talking about this during the week, and I really believe that this was uh, mm -hmm. revelation from the Holy Spirit, because I was like, why? You know, it's always the women. Sure, they were beautiful, but couldn't they have come down for men? Yeah, they could have. But then if they had, where would they keep their children that were growing in the womb? I know it's a common belief right now among some <laughs> that men can have babies. But the reality of the matter is that they ain't got no <laughs> womb for a baby. <laughs> The the angels took them took to themselves birthing people. No, that's not what happened. They took to themselves <laughs> comely women, women with with wombs. Um, so and, and and the reason that that's so important, <laughs> the reason that that's so important that it's not birthing people, it's women, um, is that if where would their child be able to incubate? Because they had been cast out of heaven. They were no longer welcome there. That's why they are the banished. That's why we're referring to them as the banished. God saw as what they mm -hmm. did as an abhorrent aberration, abhorrent and aberration. How about that? Huh? Um, it was no small reason that they decided to do that because if they weren't made to procreate, right? Well, then why does it matter? They could shapeshift or do whatever they do. I don't know. I'm not an extra dimensional being right now, uh, given my <laughs> sinful condition, right? Um, that will change in the future. Thank God. But, um, mm -hmm. as, as we stand sinful, like that's not an option. Um, uh, do, 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 do. now I, I also think I also am, am taking from, um, Timothy Alberino's writings. And I think he's very, very right about this. I don't know if he's the one that came up with this concept. I'm sure somebody else has said it, um, but maybe not in the most concise way um, possible. So Tim says that the way that this worked and played out legally was that when they decided to do <laughs> this thing, they exchanged knowledge, right? Supernatural beyond us knowledge about multiple things in exchange for the daughters of men. So technology, correct. So what, what does that mean? That essentially means that it was passable. That we gave over our birthright for some red stew. It was only partially usurped from us because we gave it away. We gave away what we wanted for the secrets of heaven, for for the the uh, the stolen fire from the gods. Quite literally, if you know the uh, the phrase that I, the uh, the myth that I'm referencing, right, Prometheus. Right? Um, yeah, right. the Prometheus. Thank you. Um, so these, though these, but do you realize that 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 mimics perfectly yeah. Jacob and Esau? Yep, like perfectly. Mm -hmm. Jacob got his brother to give over his birthright for a bowl of red lentil stew. Which is essentially like what we did, you know, I mean, it's the same kind of proportionate comparison. You know what I mean? Like what we got in return is chicken, chicken scraps. Right. Well, and I mean, that's what it is. And we're all guilty of it. You know, sure. you can't just, we can't just point at Adam and Eve and, you know, whoever the fathers or brothers of the women were. Um, we do it. We have all traded our birthright yep. away. Yep. And that's why we need Jesus because he came back and he gave us his birthright. Which is even better than what we could have ever like, hoped for. It is better. It is. It is the, the the more. 
that's the better beautiful that's why we're Oof. talking about him being the skull crusher um he literally crushed mm -hmm. skulls um mm -hmm. so uh sorry did i cut you short no nope. okay cool um so i want to kind of i'm just going to gloss over this super quick um da -da 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 -da. So chapter seven, the following chapter says, and it's super short. So this will give you guys some ideas about um, what was taught to them. Okay. And all the others took together with them took, this is chapter seven, verse one. I think there's only five chapters, five verses, six verses in this chapter, seven, verse one. And all others, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives and each one chose, uh, chose for himself one. And they began to go into them and to defile themselves with them. So now we see what the issue was. And they taught them. Now here, the, this is where it gets this is where it gets interesting for us exchanging our birthright. And they taught them charms and enchantments. Uh, that's that's uh, witchcraft, guys. And the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was. I'm not going to get into that. That's not what's with that one from there. Um, but it's a lot of cubits. Yeah, it's a lot. And I read that and I went, it's definitely, certainly that can't be right. It's definitely not six or seven feet. It is, it is. Six or seven thousand feet. Crazy amount. Yeah. And, and we'll, yeah, there's, we'll, we'll really get into yep. that in um, a couple of episodes of Giants because there, there will need to be a yep. few. It's a lot of. Research and I, I actually, too. I just want to tell you guys a few of these things because this will, this might really start putting stuff on your radar. Is like, how did we come across all the stuff we have today? Um, and it'll really make you think. Like, is everything we're always doing always the right direction? I'm not saying learning and growing are, is bad. I don't, I don't believe that God wouldn't have put us here and let us figure stuff out if you know if He didn't want us here. But it. Man, it's 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 questionable. I, I question these things a lot. So, for example, chapter eight says, Azazel taught men to make swords, knives, and shields, and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of earth and the art of working them, and bracelets, and ornaments, and the use of antimony, and the beautifying of eyelids, <laughs> um, and makeup. Yep, and all kinds of costly stones, and all coloring tinctures. Um, does it say there, sorry, Rick, in, in Enoch, who that was given to, who that knowledge was given to? It just says that they taught men. Because it's interesting. <clears throat> in Genesis, Are you thinking of Nimrod? it tells us that it's <clears throat> Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain. That's right. Tubal Cain. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, it's interesting that, that where the book of Enoch does not say the human uh part of the the trade but the book of genesis does yeah yeah i know it's it's a funny trade-off like that um here's where some of the other stuff what was also traded simjaza which was the leader remember if you guys remember um taught enchantments and root cuttings uh, of course. uh ba -ba -ba -ba. our our maros the resolving of enchantments i thought that was very interesting um huh. yeah uh, Barakjal taught astrology, Kokabel, constellations, Zikel, the, no, the knowledge of the clouds, Arakel, the signs of the earth, Shams, Shamsiel, the signs of the sun, Sariel, I actually have a guy at my church whose name is Sariel, believe it or not, uh, the course of the moon. Mm. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven, which was the need for the Savior. Um, I think we kind of touched on all the stuff I wanted to talk about in Enoch uh, that I think is relevant for this particular podcast, except the fact that the the um, watchers, the banished, were um, irredeemable. The right. the uh, the Enochian text actually talks about because Enoch, we know that Enoch walked with God. The Bible tells us that. Um, and <clears throat> however true or not, uh, Enoch, the, the account of Enoch is, you, you must imagine that at least, I don't know, 30% of it is accurate. It talks about how these banished watchers, these banished, the sons of, uh, sons of God went to Enoch and asked him to appeal their case because God was like, sorry, 
it's over. You guys made your, your decision. There's no going back. And, and they begged Enoch terrified, like, go talk to, talk to the creator, have him, you know, vie for us, try and figure it out. But there was, there was no redemption because, and that's what, that's what makes you realize how small we really are and how unbelievable it is that God loves us is that he didn't have <laughs> to, he didn't have to save us. He chose to save us. I mean, the beings that were glorified beings that lived in the realms of heaven and were able to cross dimensions and do all sorts of stuff that we only dream of, right, in our, our small minds, right. he chose us. He chose us. So if you feel today that you don't have a purpose or that your purpose is small, recognize that God chooses the lowly things, quite literally the <laughs> lowly things, for his divine and special purposes. That's right. <sighs> Man, that's good. Um, this is the part where I feel like we're done, and then we find. Other there's things. there there is one last thing I wanted to mention, um, and and this is really, this is this is it for me, really and truly. Uh, as I was reading this, um, I mentioned to you guys that in the in the Anakian account and in the Genesis six account, right, there is the clear indication that women were the target. So what was interesting to me is that there is an account um, that we do actually have in the Bible in Genesis, I believe it's Genesis 20 that I was just talking about, Shell, that where the uh, the angels show up in where Lot is at. You know what I'm talking about? 19. Might be. Yeah, I know. I know mm -hmm. what you're talking about. I just wasn't sure of which chapter. Let me just make sure this is what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So it is Genesis 19. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to explain it to you guys. Basically, these angels show up and in uh, mm -hmm. Sodom and uh, what we know as Sodom and Gomorrah. And they show up to Lot, Lot, who was considered a righteous man, who was uh, Abraham's, uh, what was he to Abraham? Remind me. Nephew. Nephew. Okay. Nephew. Thank you. And basically, they Lot urges them drastically. I mean, he really, really tries to drive the point home. Please He's like, leave. please come inside or get out of here, basically. Like, you don't need to be out in the square. Yep. Yep. And they're like, we'll just sleep in the square. And they, and Lot's like, he's talking to the, they're angels. The, the word says that they're angels. And he's like, no, you need to come inside if you're not going to leave. So a ton of them. And, and he knows they're angels. Yes. Yes. They, they're visibly angels. Yep, yep. Yep. And so do the rest of the men in the, in Sodom. And so the men of all ages, it says old and young, which is very interesting, go and they want to have sex with these angels. Okay. So I don't know if, because in theory, a Nephilim is a hybrid and they're, and the way Tim describes it is great. I think it's brilliant. He says they were human enough to get to, to be qualified as being able to exist, right? They were not human because they were part, they were half angel, half human, but they were human enough. Um, I wonder how many of right. those in Sodom were not human anyway, not really human. Um, it's really interesting. Um, actually, uh, we'll get to go into that, um, but your supposition of there being hybrid, um, a pretty good amount of hybrid uh, beings in the Plains cities, which Sodom and Gomorrah were part of, I think it's seven different uh, cities uh, on that plain there. Um, well, we will get to get into it, but yeah, they, they definitely knew, yeah. um, one of, one of Noah's sons, the, the cursed one, well, the one who's Shem. son, Shem, Shem, Noah Shem. cursed, Shem's son, um, it, K, I think his name is Canaan, <laughs> um, goes there, that, that area is the area he inhabits. And um, it, 
it's some very interesting subject matter. Nobody wants to talk about what Shem or very few people want to talk about what Shem did that that caused his father to curse mm. him and his line. Um, but I I have read a couple of different theories and it was way more than looking at his dad's naked to yep. us. I'm just saying it it there was action that was vile he violated his father um and and we'll we'll break that down at at some point because it's it's pretty crazy yep, yep. Um, and i'm glad actually that's that is excellent that's you're segueing in segueing into the, the thing i actually really wanted to touch on um through that story is that one we can clearly see that if they wanted to have sex with these angels right then that means that angels have the ability to mate um, or, or have intercourse regardless of what gender they are. Which in Jesus, in Jesus never said that they didn't. He just said that they don't. Correct. They don't marry in heaven. There's not a need for it. God fulfills that thing that's missing. We become one with him yes. in some form. I'm yeah. not saying we become God because that's, I don't know. I don't think we do, but, um, that he, he never said that they cannot have mm -hmm. sex. And mm -hmm. there's a whole huge contingency of Christianity that says, well, God says he just said that they don't. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Not and, and, they can't. and, you know, especially if you're inundated with the lines of Seth, the the sons of Seth um, backdrop. You, I mean, it doesn't even cross your radar. You know, it doesn't it's, even make any sense for you to think if about. If you it. have a humanistic worldview, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's a very humanistic worldview yep. of Christianity. Yep. yep. It's crazy. Um, and so, having said that, actually, that that's which is what I wanted. I'm glad you touched on because that's exactly what I was going to. Is that that. As I was reading this, I was alerted to the, the expression. Actually, let me just read it real quick in Jude. Um, this is Jude <laughs> verses six and seven. There's Sorry, two short Jude, verses. Jude six and seven is what I uh, referenced earlier. The direct quote from Enoch. Um, quote of Enoch, but that was 13 and 14. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. 13 and 14 is the direct quote. Hmm. When we can... You know, people doing evil, evil people doing evil in the evil way. They can mm -hmm. devise evil, however evil they can evilly, do it. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it's like how many, how many evils evil, can evil, you evil, throw evil, in evil, one evil, sentence? Evil, evil. Um, <laughs> I mean, well, Enoch is. I mean, his writings are very much like that. You know, yeah, they're like when the God of Heaven with the God of Heaven by the God of Heaven. You know, you're like, I get it, dude. It's the God of Heaven. <laughs> like, I know who he is. <laughs> well, that's. It's the same as the holy, holy, holy. Sure, so sure, sure, sure. It's it's a when you take when you take that that uh, premise and put it there, then you you get he is really trying to strike home reduplication, baby. A message. Yep. Reduplication is super important in Hebrew and probably most Semitic languages. Um, I don't know enough about the other Semitic languages to tell you that, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can find out. Um, so Jude 1, verses 6 and 7. And angels that kept not their own principality, but left their proper habitation. He hath kept in everlasting bonds, and other translations say everlasting chains, under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. That is the day of judgment. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them, having in like manner with these given themselves over to fornication and gone after strange flesh, are set forth <laughs> as an example, suffering the punishment of eternal fire. Um, I wanted to mention that, and I'm glad that I did read it, because strange flesh to me, um, uh, until not that long ago, I hadn't given any other thought than, you know, having sex with the same same sex partner right or or even i mean bestiality right is also strange flesh but all of those which to me like i think about that i'm like oh geez yeah that's you know that's and and 
If you, I, I want to say real quick, if you are bisexual and you're watching or you're, you're homosexual and you're watching our show, first of all, thanks for watching. But second, um, I want you to understand why we as Christians think what we do about homosexuality, bisexuality, and bestiality. Why do we think these things? Or for that matter, polygamy. Uh, we believe that the body, and I'm taking this right from Ravi Zacharias. Love this guy's example about this. He says that we believe that the body, just like race and sexuality, are sacred. And God has made them in a sacred way. And so when we defile that sacred order, we defile ourselves and we make him out to to be we call him a liar is basically what we do it's not that we hate you as christians we don't hate you as christians we love you absolutely deeply absolutely not um it's it's total opposite and we know that god loves you so like much god loves you so much and we love you too christ died for you because he loves you and thinks that you are worth Amen. it worth his death and you have to recognize that sin is sin and the wages of sin is still it's death. Tough. And we need we need to make the trade that Christ brokered for us. He, man, he gave us a trade. We deserve death. Every single one of us. There is an I deserve death. Um, honestly, probably a hundred thousand times over. And he paid for my death. Thank you, Jesus. He paid the wages that <laughs> I owed man I that's the only thing I was r really truly owed I was owed hell and death and yep. instead he has given me eternal life and so much good I can't even tell you but we were we also aren't aren't getting into that but we certainly will. We will touch on it. And if you have questions, I have friends. I have friends who struggle with this. They want mm -hmm. to know what is right for them to do. And it's it's very hard because I love them. As do I. And the first thing I will, I, I'll say is that you are fearfully and wonderfully mm -hmm. made. All God's works are wonderful. I know this full well. And before you ever had a breath, while you were still being knit together in your mother's womb, Christ saw you. Mm -hmm. God saw you. And every one of your days is written down already before one of them came to be. That's crazy kind of mm -hmm. love. And he knows, he knows that in this world we have proclivities. We mm -hmm. have, we have attractions to things, gossip, chocolate, same sex, um, our own self, our own, um, praise of our own self sex out of wedlock for that matter right and out of any of the bonds of it yep. you know yep. whether it's an affair or whether yep. it's before beforehand yep. um there's there is so much and all of that hurts us yep. and separates us from christ and he recognizes it and he can free us from all of it mm -hmm. but you there's no Somebody who is who is into homosexuality or any other sexual sin or any other sin for that matter, it, murder, um, you are not beyond redemption. Mm. Christ died for every sin. If you are human and you have sinned and you want him to rule your life, he will come in and rule yeah. it. That's right. And if you don't want him to rule your life, you can be as pious and as perfect as you think you can possibly be and know that the end result is you're going to get your wages. Whatever you you're decide. You're going to get those wages. Yep. Um, it's, it's in the end, it's not about the good we do or the evil we do. It's about whether or not we accept his righteousness. Yeah. And we accept his lordship. Yep. And that's 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 the thing that the the banished did is they said, I will not be subjected to what you say. I will not, I will not bow, you will not be the Lord of my life. Yep. That's that's what they did. Um 
and that's what it comes down to. I don't want anybody to think that that I think that they are not worthy of redemption because I don't believe that because the Bible does not teach that. But not it true. also does not teach do what thou will. That that comes from the enemy. Mm. That comes from the father of lies and the prince of the power of air. He is the one that says, do whatever you want. Yep. Christ says, take up your cross and follow me. So and... uh, I wasn't wasn't planning on a, a salvation speech, but I don't know why the heck I wasn't, because that is what we do. That's why we're here. <laughs> Jesus loves us, man. He loves me. He knows all my things, and there's lots of it, and it was ugly, and sometimes it's still yeah. ugly, and he loves me. So if he loves me, I know. I know that he loves you. Yep. I know it beyond any shadow of a doubt more than I know how to spell my name. I know that he loves you and that he died for you and that God accepted his sacrifice. That sacrifice is already accepted. So all that you have to do is accept it and then, you know, live for him all the days of your life. So the first part, it's a free gift. It's a free gift. And the rest of it is a response of somebody who is in love, wanting to show that person who loved them so much their love back. Man. So not a, it's not about works of righteousness. It's about loving the God who loves us so much. Yep. He is so good to us, though. Hmm. Um, I feel like, oh, I had something to say, and I did. <laughs> and I wrote it down because it's so, it's a thing. People hear me say it all the time who know me in my personal life. Um, all of this. The treason of the angels, the treason of mankind, uh, any other treasons that have happened since then, any tre uh, treason, treason. Ha, ha, that's the word, any treason that will happen in the future. God already knows about it. It isn't a surprise. He wasn't surprised when he created the earth and mankind and said, hey, guys, go and tell them about me. Go show them um, my ways. Teach them about me. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to, to try to take God's place with us. He didn't go, oh, no, I never saw that coming. <laughs> he knew before. For the foundation of the earth, before he said let, he knew what was going to mm -hmm. happen. And he already, already had everything planned out for our redemption. I don't know why he allowed Satan to, to um, garner hubris and, and um, revolt against him and lead others in revolt against him. I don't know why he didn't wipe him out. Except that I know that you cannot have mandated love. That doesn't exist. That is a paradox, and it won't exist. Yep. So I assume that because he is a loving God and he wants to be loved, that he gave them the free will to choose to rebel, just like he did us. And Indeed. he knew it was going to happen. And he didn't stop it because he wasn't powerless. He did it because the proof of love is in our choice to never choose him. Yeah. And so I, I don't ever want people to think, well, this is a surprise. Oof. I, I guess he had to change his plans. No, he didn't. This is part of his plan. The fallen part of his plan, Nephilim somehow, somehow part of his plan, not a part that he was willing to ever justify um, for them because they're, they're, creation was honestly an act of utter and complete selfishness um, on behalf of their parent, on behalf of their father. Um, that That's hideous to me to think that those angels were willing to uh, procreate with a woman 
to have an offspring that they knew was irredeemable. They knew Mm -hmm. there was no redemption for this child. And they chose that anyhow. That is vile. That is wicked. And that is evil. I mean, that's evil. They are indeed evil. And I don't (laughs) think that there would be um, a turning within them to have redemption anyhow, because that is so corrupted and so heinous. Like I don't, I can't pull out any more uh, superlative, horrid words. I don't have any more. Um, What they did to their own offspring, that is it. That is the epitome of evil. Yep. Yep. Um. That's what I had to say. <laughs> um, the only thing I was actually going to add, or I was actually about to, I was uh, about to finish up as well as, um, the, and the reason I started off talking about uh, homosexuality or bestiality or bisexuality or any other sexualities, Pedophilia. we just won't get into any of that. I mean, I'm just saying in general, uh, I had not considered this, but God views any of these crossings as abominations, uh, just like just like Christians know within the, the core of our being that that homosexual relationship is not the plan that God has for mankind. It is the same gut wrenching, deep opposition that God feels when he talks about angelic and, and human sexual relationships it's that same thing so if you came onto this podcast and you just heard us say oh well it's because i'm homosexual that's why you don't love me and blah blah whatever you want to call it that that's fine but just understand that this is not just a mandate for humankind this is a mandate for all of reality uh seen and unseen realms um so yeah that's all i wanted to finish with that's it (laughs) yeah And we do love you. We do. You do. I can I can call something wrong and still love the person who's doing wrong. As a matter of fact, that's why you call yeah. out wrong. That's why we call it out. It that's right. sucks. It sucks to be the person to say to say the truth that's unpopular. It sucks. I hate being a blunt uh Oh, what's the word? Uh, uh, a blunt tool. I I hate it. I I don't like confrontation. I don't like telling people when something is wrong because I'd rather just you know let's all just get along and they can figure they stuff out on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be so nice. I it it'd be nice if I didn't have to, but. Dude, I love you. I, I, man, I'm loved by God. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve to be. And he wants to love you the same way. He wants to hear you say, I am loved by God and I don't deserve it. But I'm going to do whatever he tells me to do. I'm going to say what he tells me to say because I love him and I know that he loves you. And Thank you for I watching this episode of I'm The Christian Theological Dark Web. Please stay tuned as we are dropping our continuation of this episode on Monday, May 3rd, my mind, where we cover the banished from the Book of Enoch, children, but the one myths and legends around these characters, and them. more about the creation um, of the unholy offspring with the rod that for sure means. What I'm saying Please. is follow us wherever Sometimes you follow podcasts like and rate us five stars. So cool. Calling it out is, We'd also is love to hear from you on social media as well. That we, we as Christians you can always email us at the Christian Theological Dark Web at gmail.com. You can also give on Patreon on patreon.com slash the CTDW. You can lost in fathom. any way. Uh, it's that's not the case. God is God is the one that sets the standard, not us. We don't get to set the standard, and because of that, this has been a production of CTEW Studios. That God bless. Doesn't add Shalom up. Doesn't equal and what God Maranatha. Wants. And I have to line up with what He demands of me. That's that's my job. That's that's what what I owe to the Lord, right? Um, and that could be in any variety right. of ways. And you know, yeah. 
I will say this. This is a red pill and podcast. So when I was growing up, <laughs> I, I, I was very confused. I had homosexual relationships when I was a kiddo and I was abused when I was a kiddo sexually. And I have literally asked my whole life whether or not there was ever time for me to say this, but right now is the time. So if you feel that way as well, just know that you are deeply loved by the Holy Spirit that he intimately desires to embrace you, to give you warmth and peace that you do not know, to, mm -hmm. to give you a home, to give you a belonging and a new beginning that you greatly and deeply desire. The Holy Spirit longs to you. I wrote a song not too long ago, about a year ago, that says the Holy Spirit is calling you home. The Holy Spirit is calling you home. And that's where you belong. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this podcast for, for any other reason and you happen to, upon, to stumble upon this portion, <laughs> Let it ride, man. Let it ride. Let the Holy Spirit convict Welcome you. Home. Understand that your sin keeps you and impedes you from God and that your repentance draws you closer to him, allows him to bless you, allows him to pour out that love that he deeply desires to give you. So on that note, we love you guys. That's all I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Shall I do the uh, ironic blessing? <laughs> yes. All right. I'm going to read it in the American Standard Version. I like this version. It leaves the Jehovah in there. <laughs> um, Jehovah, bless thee and keep thee. Jehovah, make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Jehovah, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless you guys. Amen. I'm not going to do any plugins. I've started to do that afterward because uh, we're our podcast is getting better. So on that nice. note. I love you guys. <laughs> God bless you guys. Shalom. Shalom and Maranatha. 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 Let him come. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Bless you guys. Thank you for watching this episode of the Christian Theological Dark Web. Next week, on May the 15th, we cover the banished and their three treacheries. We thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Please follow us wherever you follow podcasts and rate us five stars. You can follow us on social media as well at solo.to slash the CTDW to get to any one of our social media sites. Furthermore, you can email us at the Christian Theological Dark Web at gmail.com and you can give to Patreon at patreon.com slash the CTDW. This has been a production of CTDW Studios. God bless, shalom, and Maranatha. The Holy Spirit is coming.